So you want to classically homeschool, but your oldest is four or five. Here's what you need to do. I don't know if you've noticed this, but the most eager homeschool moms are the ones whose oldest child is four or five years old. I was one of these myself. When I felt the eye roll behind the smile of an older, deep in the trenches homeschool mom, I bristled. Take me seriously, I wanted to plead. I hear you, I've been there, and I have a serious answer for the homeschool mom who wants to classically homeschool her kids and is just starting out. You can do it, and there are best practices for you to take seriously yourself. Let's dig in and talk about those. I'm Misty Winkler, author of The Convivial Homeschool, Gospel Encouragement for Keeping Your Sanity While Living and Learning Alongside Your Kids. I've graduated one, almost two students, and my youngest is nine, and we have classically homeschooled all the way through. Let me tell you how to get started. Back when my oldest was three, four, and five, I loved to visit the homes of older homeschooling moms. I browsed their shelves, I asked questions, I flipped through different books. I even watched my very first Matthew C. lesson at one of their houses. I knew that they were sharing wisdom when they told me to back off and wait and just enjoy the young years. But I was in my early 20s, and not only did I want to figure out this homeschooling thing before I got started, I was still also figuring out who I was and who I was going to become. A while back, I received an email that went something like this. I lean more classical than Charlotte Mason at this point, but I still want to blend the two. However, teaching the grammar of each subject, including chants, jingles, and tools, is the part I don't know how to do just on my own. I'm much better at choosing books. Really, how do you go about this? Do I just go with Ambleside Online and stick something like Classical Conversations on top of it? It seems like a crazy amount. Right now, I'm thinking of using a year of playing skillfully with maybe Caps Latin and some Ambleside Online reading. My son will be five in May and will have finished 100 easy lessons for reading by then, so I don't have to focus on teaching the beginnings of reading next year. This isn't the first email of this kind that I've received, and I always want to write more than is technically appropriate for an email reply. Hence, this episode. I want the excited to homeschool mom whose kids are all under six to know. I will not roll my eyes at you. I do take you seriously. And hear this passed on wisdom. Now that it's my turn to be pushing 40 and graduating children, don't buy any curriculum. Don't plan out an entire scope and sequence. Not that I took that advice. But I will tell you, the scope and sequence that I wrote was out the window before my oldest hit third grade, with good reason. (laughs) It was not worth keeping. Not having a curriculum or a daily learning schedule does not mean that this point in your children's life, in your homeschool, isn't vital in your homeschooling journey and in your child's life. That's the real key, I think. When we're told to wait on formal lessons, it feels like we're being told that we're trapped in an unimportant zone, biding our time until real school, true education can commence. But that is not the case. Quintilian in the classical era wrote, let us not therefore waste the earliest years. And that's what we want as young, just beginning homeschool moms. We want to not waste these years, which truly are critical in our child's education and life. If you're excited to begin homeschooling, but it's not time for formal instruction yet, or at least not more than 15 or 20 minutes of formal instruction. That is if your children are six and under. 
you still have a huge opportunity before you that will serve you well if you use it well. The beginning is the best time to lay a strong foundation. It's not actually your child who needs the classical education at this stage, it's you. Learn educational philosophy now. Read the classics. Play classical music during the day and in the car. Learn some other art as well, because the practice of one art will help you in another. The art of teaching and homeschooling included. Homeschooling is an art. It's not a science. It's not a program or a formula. So we have to approach it appropriately. You are an artist, not a technician. Life is physically demanding and exhausting at this stage in the game. And you also are probably craving some mental stimulation. So this is the time to read and read and read. Later, the children will be giving you more mental stimulation than physical, and your energy availability will change. If you're eager to begin homeschooling classically, start by turning on some classical music, get good audiobooks for the kids, play outside a lot, and while you're supervising, read In Vital Harmony by Karen Glass, The Liberal Arts Tradition by Ravi Jane and Kevin Clark, Beauty in the Word by Stratford Caldecott, Norms and Nobility by David Hicks, and Poetic Knowledge by James Taylor. Stock people's book lists and book stales. Stock bloggers, I know I did. Chat with homeschool moms face to face, asking open-ended questions, and just listen. Perhaps volunteer to teach or help at a co-op, not for the sake of your five-year-old, but for yourself, for growth in experience and wisdom as you see and hear from other people farther along in the journey. Don't jump the gun and commit to a program. Lay the foundations that your child needs in yourself first. This is classical. It is not unschooling. The ancients and the medievals did not create elaborate education regimes for the primary ages. There was no such thing as preschool or kindergarten or even first grade. Those children, for the most part, just hung out at home with their moms. That's normal. That's traditional. That's classical. Live a full life alongside your kids. And that doesn't mean that they didn't think the primary ages were important. Quite the contrary. Plato said, the most important part of education is right training in the nursery. As I've been reading The Great Tradition, which has excerpts of all kinds of writings on education, I've noticed that when the classical authors speak of children, they admonish parents not to ship their kids off with servants or servile supervisors or foolish friends. They tell us that we should speak correctly to our children and not indulge in baby talk. They tell us to teach them letters and tell them stories. Education as a program even classically, did not traditionally begin until the child was reasoning. Talk to a nine or 10 year old for a time and observe the difference between his thinking process and conversational ability as your five or six year old. When your oldest is five or six and he's followed by younger siblings, he seems so smart, so capable, and he is, but he is also quite young and not reasoning yet. Whatever you do, don't try to start Latin with your five or six year old unless you're speaking it fluently and doing it for fun. Rather, read fairy tales, Aesop's fables, and begin working your way through the thousand good books list. Don't construct science experiments. Instead, spend hours outside each day and go to different sorts of outdoor environments to play in. In the book, Teaching Science So Students Learn Science, classical school teacher John Mays says that outdoor experience is the best foundation for later science learning. And it comes at a premium in this tech-driven age. Start a morning time, but not full-blown mimics of those who have older kids and have been doing it for years. Start with 15 or 20 minutes, including the reading of poetry and nursery rhymes. 
Pick one hymn and a psalm to learn, add a new one every few months, and in 10 years, the amount that you've filled your heart and your mind with will astonish you. But it starts with one, not with a full binder. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. After all, classical education is not a set curriculum. If you must choose a packaged curriculum for preschool, kindergarten, or even first grade, know that you are doing it for you, not because your child needs it. Do it as training for yourself, not for your child. Hold it loosely and expect to graduate beyond it with subsequent children. After all, when your oldest is four, five, or six, you do have to be more intentional. What older moms often forget is how sparse and stretched a home with all littles can be. My fifth child is now nine, and I did almost nothing intentionally with her till she was six. But that's okay, because her life has been more naturally full of maturity and learning. Her older siblings were playing games, telling stories, talking about their books, Our morning time had already developed for over 10 years. In morning time, where she would come and go as she pleased, we were reciting scripture, catechism, creeds, poems, and Shakespeare. We're praying, singing, and listening. It's rich, and she's just along for the ride. But when my oldest was her age, he was helping to steer the ship. There was no rich environment going on around him. Your oldest and you set the family culture in a way that other children do not. Get them on board young, not by pushing them, but by keeping the tone light and upbeat and not forcing confrontation. You are learning the ropes. You're not unschooling or being a pushover if you skip lessons when your five or six year old is tired, cranky, or distracted. Work with what you have with where you are. Expose your children to truth, goodness, and beauty in a behind the scenes sort of way, more than a mommy is the captain of this ship, so shape up sort of way. Put on good music, go to a variety of parks, visit a museum or zoo or aquarium, read good books, read lots of books aloud and on audio for yourself and to your kids. Before you know it, you will be chanting Latin declensions, correcting sentence diagrams, and figuring out how best to review regularly all you've accumulated in morning time. But let those times come when they come, and don't rush them. When you spend hours out of doors in a variety of settings, when you read books yourself and also aloud to your children, when you listen to good music and attend church, and teach your children to exert self-control in daily life, you are classically educating them. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. It turns out that homeschooling is really a lot less about curriculum and scope and sequence and doing all the right things. It's about relationship and discipleship and growing in learning and sanctification ourselves as moms. Homeschooling is a sanctification sauna, no matter what age your children are, because homeschooling and and parenting are so interconnected. My new book, The Convivial Homeschool, Gospel Encouragement for Keeping Your Sanity While Living and Learning Alongside Your Kids, is geared for the homeschool mom who needs true encouragement to keep up her motivation and goodwill while homeschooling because homeschooling is a good work that we need to not grow weary in. If you need encouragement like that, then check out my book on Amazon. It's in Kindle and paperback format, The Convivial Homeschool. In it, you'll find encouragement to repent, rejoice, repeat.